We are now in the fifth week of the season of Epiphany, the season of God's manifestation. In this season, we ponder more deeply on where God is appearing to us, where God is calling to us in our lives, and we discern our response to that call. Let us enter into our worship in sacred silence, opening our hearts and minds to God's many manifestations, God's many calls. And we light these candles as a sign of God's presence in our midst. Let us bring this awareness into our worship. Hear, O people, our Creator calls. The reign of God is here. Let us listen and respond. Christ Jesus, the Beloved, unites flesh and spirit. Let us live as Beloved embracing our divine identity. Holy Spirit, breath divine, recreates and liberates. We open ourselves to your transforming energy. Amen. Please join in our gathering hymn number 524, Make Us, O God, a Church That Shares, 524. Today, uh, the fifth Sunday of, of Epiphany, the last Sunday of Epiphany, we continue to reflect on this theme of divine calling. And I invite you to reflect on three women in the early church. You might recall last week we reflected on Queen Esther. Today we reflect on Lydia, Dorcas, and Phoebe. Has anyone ever heard of these names before? 
Well, that's great. Ph not Phoebe. Okay. To be honest with you, I forgot about these names. Uh, maybe heard about them in theology school, didn't hear about them growing up. And so it's a wonderful thing that will bring them into our prayer life to guide us along our spiritual journey. And so we pray, ever-living God, creator of women in your own image, born of a woman in the midst of a world half women, carried by women to mission, fields around the globe, made known by women to all the children of the earth. We thank you for the lives and faith witness of Lydia, Dorcas, and Phoebe. Glory to you, O God. God of grace, you sent your servant Paul to Philippi in Greece. There, as he sought a place to pray, met Lydia and some women outside the gate by the river in Philippi. We praise you, O God, for leading us to share and encounter your truth in one another in the margins of life. Open our hearts to those around us. In silence, bring to mind those you might not expect God's light to be revealed to you. God of the unexpected, we praise you. Lydia was from Theatira and was a wealthy merchant of purple dyed goods. However, her wealth did not hinder her heart from being open to wisdom and truth. By her light, Paul too encountered the good news. We praise you, O oh God, for keeping our hearts open to your wisdom and truth. We praise you for the good news revealed to us in one another. In silence, bring to mind those around you who reveal God's light to you. God of wisdom and truth, we praise you. Lydia accepted the good news of your son, and so Paul baptized her. The Christian church celebrates her as the first Christian convert of Europe. By your Holy Spirit, Lydia's faith bore fruit in her generous hospitality to Paul. She opened her home to him, and so enabled Paul to preach the gospel. We praise you, O oh God, for shining your love upon your people. We praise you with hearts that respond with compassion and generosity. And in silence, bring to mind those whose generosity has revealed God's love to you. God of light and compassion, we praise you. God of grace, you bless the ancient people of Joppa with your disciple Dorcas. Through her faith in you, she devoted herself to good works and charity. We praise you, O oh God, for true disciples who by their faith and works have strengthened our faith in silence Bring to mind those whose work and charity have strengthened your faith. God of light and compassion, we praise you. In your wisdom, you called her to yourself by her illness and death. 
Only you are God and your ways are a mystery to us sometimes. We praise you, O God, for the many mysteries we face in our lives. We praise you, trusting in your will for us. In silence, bring to mind a challenge that you faced whose purpose still remains a mystery. God of mystery, we praise you. And as your disciples prepared her body, your faithful people send for the apostle Peter. We praise you, O God, for hearts to tend to one another's needs. We praise you for the gifts to care for one another. In silence, bring to mind those you are a caregiver for. God of love, we praise you. In haste, your servant Peter came to Dorcas, knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Through his faith, prayer, and actions, Peter performed the first miracle by an apostle. Dorcas opened her eyes and seeing Peter, sat up. We praise you, O God, for raising us from the challenges and deaths we face. We praise you for renewing us. In silence, bring to mind a time when you've been raised from challenges and death. God of life, we praise you. The disciples called the people, the saints and the widows, the great and the grieved to come and see for themselves the great miracle. Many came to believe by the power of God. We praise you, O God, for your mighty works. We praise you for bringing people to yourself in your many ways. In silence, bring to mind a mighty work of God that you cherish. Almighty God, we praise you. Ever living God, you call from among us servant leaders and empower them to bring about your reign. You call Phoebe to be a deacon in your church in Corinth and later in your church in Rome. We praise you, O God, for empowering us to bring about your reign of justice and peace. In silence, bring to mind those who through their service have enabled your leadership. Ever-living God, we praise you. Your servant Paul prays fervently for Phoebe and her ministry. He calls forth the talents and gifts you bestow on your people for the building up of your reign. We praise you, O God, for blessing us with gifts and talents, with time and treasure. We praise you for leading us to share in this bounty. In silence, bring to mind the gifts and talents you bear for the good of God's reign. Gracious God, we praise you. 
Gracious God, we praise and thank you for the bold witness and service of your disciples, Lydia, Dorcas, and Phoebe. We praise and thank you for the bold witness of all women who have come before us. May their lives and their prayers upon us inspire our bold witness and service. We remember Queen Esther who pleaded against power for the liberation of the people. Pray for us. We remember Deborah, laywoman and judge who led the people of God. Pray for us. We remember Elizabeth of Judah, mother of John the Baptist, who recognized the value of another woman. Pray for us. We remember Mary Magdalene, minister of Jesus, the first evangelist of the Christ. Pray for us. We remember St. Scholastica, who taught her brother St. Benedict to honor the spirit above systems. Pray for us. We remember St. Hildegard, who suffered interdict for the doing of right. Pray for us. We remember St. Joan of Arc, who put no law above the law of God. Pray for us. We remember St. Claire of Assisi, who confronted power with the image of women as equal. Pray for us. We remember St. Julian of Norwich, who proclaimed for all of us the motherhood of God. Pray for us. We remember the many deaconesses and women leaders of the Moravian Church. Pray for us. We remember the Countess Erdmuth Dorothea von Zinzendorf, Zinzendorf's first wife. Pray for us. We remember Henriette Catherine von Gerstdorf, Zinzendorf's grandmother. Pray for us. We remember Anna Nitschmond, chief eldress for all women in the church and mother of the entire Moravian church. Pray for us. We remember Anna Johanna Peach, the general eldress for all single sisters. Pray for us. And we remember Mary, the mother of Jesus, who heard the call of God and answered. Pray for us. Gracious God, by the bold witness and service of these holy women, may we be inspired. Empower us by your Holy Spirit to bring about your reign of justice and peace. We make this prayer in the name of God, our Father, our Mother, who creates, redeems, and empowers us. Amen. And renewed in faith by the witness of bold women, let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. And we offer a sign of peace to our friends on Zoom. Peace be with you. Our hymn of praise this morning is number 688. Lord, whose love in humble service, 688.
please be seated. Let us pray. In silence, we lift up our ten intentions for this time of worship. God, holy mystery, you gather us, your beloved children, women and men, around your Son, the living Word. In the lives of the countless women of faith, especially in the lives of Lydia, Dorcas, and Phoebe, whose stories we hear today, strengthen our faith in you. Move us to healing, liberation, peace, and joy. Help us to see our belovedness and help us to hear our call to bring others to your loving embrace. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, your son, born to us through the faith of a woman, Mary. Amen. Last week, we heard the call story of Queen Esther. Through her uncle, Mordecai, God invited Esther to help save God's people. The week before that, the story of Jesus calling Peter and his brother Andrew and James and his brother John. The week before that, we heard the story of Jesus calling Peter and uh, Philip and Nathaniel. Today, we hear three short stories which we've already prayed and reflect on. Let us now hear the story of Lydia, Dorcas, and Phoebe as it comes to us in Luke's Acts of the Apostles and Paul's letter to the Romans. Our first reading is about the conversion of Lydia, uh, found in Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse 11. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samuch race the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. We sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God was listening to us. She was from the city of Tyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The second scripture reading is uh, about Peter in Lydia and Joppa, uh, beginning Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. 
The final reading is from Romans chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church of Centuria, so that you may welcome her in the Lord as is fitting for the saints, and help her in whatever she may require from you, for she has been a benefactor of many and of myself as well. Amen. Thanks, Jim. All those names can be challenging, I'm sure. (laughs) You did well. God calls to us in all the seasons of our life. In this liturgical season of Epiphany, I've invited you to reflect on the reality of God calling to us, God calling you. Today, in this last Sunday of Epiphany, we hear the stories of Lydia, Dorcas, and Phoebe, three women in the early church, who heard God calling to them in the different seasons of their lives. First, we heard of Lydia, who lived in the Greek city of Philippi. Luke, in his account in the Acts of the Apostles, describes Philippi as a thriving Roman colony. Lydia was a dealer in purple dye and had a household, which we heard was entirely baptized. These realities indicated that she had considerable wealth. Fun fact, the purple dye that Lydia made her wealth from comes from the mucus of a mollusk. And mollusks are like snails and slugs. And so you can imagine why this purple dye was so expensive. In fact, this dye was uh, used in the togas of Roman senators on the stripes around their sleeves. You might recall purple is used in the liturgical seasons of Advent and Lent. Liturgically, purple traditionally symbolizes preparation. In Lent, it bears another significance. The soldiers who tortured Jesus mocked him by putting a crown of thorns on his head and dressing him in a purple robe. We will never know if that purple robe came from the dye that Lydia produced. If it was, it could be read positively or negatively. Regardless, Lydia was a wealthy woman who was a worshiper of God, says Luke in the account. This is in contrast to Jesus' teaching in Matthew's gospel when he said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Here, it is God who opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. With that openness to the good news proclaimed by Paul, she was converted. As mentioned in our liturgy, she was the first European convert. And not only did she believe, but she opened her home and shared her resources with Paul so he could preach in Philippi. So, Lydia was rich, but not spoiled by her wealth. She was still humble to God's call. In a way, she was in the springtime of her life, in full bloom, thriving, and beginning to bear fruit. Perhaps in some ways, we can relate to this springtime of life. Perhaps it was like a new marriage or a new start in Canada. Perhaps it was a time of new growth in our congregation when we opened our hearts to God's call to bear fruit. God calls to us in the seasons of our lives. Next, we have Dorcas, a very unusual call. The story begins with a short description of Dorcas. She was a disciple, a follower of Jesus, and was devoted to good works and acts of charity. She was known for making clothes for needy widows. But sadly, she became ill and died. So to use our metaphor, she was in the bleak winter of her life. However, as her body was being prepared for burial, her Christian siblings got word that Peter was in town and so sent for him. When Peter arrived, there were mourners who showed Peter some of the tunics that Dorcas made for the needy widows. 
It's almost like the mourners were telling Peter, Dorcas doesn't deserve death. She did so much good. Look at this beautiful tunic she made for the poor and the widows. Perhaps with that plea, Peter knelt down and prayed. Now, this scene mirrors similar scenes with Jesus, maybe that provoked in your mind as well. The one that comes to mind for me is the raising of Jairus' daughter. Like Jesus in that story, Peter commanded Dorcas to get up. Like Jairus, Dorcas also sat up. And as we mentioned in the, in the prayers, this was the first miracle by any apostle. The raising of a faithful follower of Jesus who happens to be a woman. It's clear that God still had a plan for Dorcas, that her being raised from the dead be a sign for others of God's power. How many times have we confronted great challenges, great darkness, and a form of death? How many times have we dealt with the death of a loved one, a divorce, a parting of ways, the loss of a job, moving to a different country, city, or home. Perhaps, like Dorcas, you too have been raised from that. And not only that, God still used you to bring about God's reign. Raise your hand if you have. Perhaps you'd like to share briefly how God came to you in the winter of your life and raised you from the dead. Would anyone like to share? Maybe just nod your heads if you can relate to that experience. Wonderful. Finally, we have Phoebe. Phoebe was a deacon of the church in Sencrie. Christian history has high praise for Phoebe. Some scholars believe her diaconal role involved not only service to the poor, but actually preaching and evangelization. This could be seen as countercultural, since ancient Rome and Greek society was very male dominant and patriarchal. What's more, Phoebe's diaconal ministry was to be a model for women deacons in the 300s and 400s. Sencrie was not far from Corinth, and yet Corinth received two letters from Paul indicating there were no disputes in Sencrie because of Phoebe's amazing leadership. Phoebe was also well trusted by Paul to go to Rome with his letter. History has it that she eventually moved to Rome to do ministry there. Her freedom to move there indicated that she was a widow. Her managing a household and her ability to fund Paul's mission to Spain also indicated her wealth. So, we can say that Phoebe was in the summertime of her life and ministry. She was bearing fruit, and that fruit was full of seed for new growth. Perhaps you too have been or are in the summertime of your life. How has God called you to bring about the rain in those times? But God does not only call us individually in the seasons of our lives, God also calls us collectively as a congregation in the seasons of its life. Today we come together for our annual church council. We will reflect and celebrate how God has been active in our congregation throughout the year. And leading up to our district synod in June, we will be invited to reflect on how God is calling us to live, love, and build the reign of God. What season are we in as a congregation? How might God be calling us? These are questions to ponder another time, but today I'd like to plant that seed and question in your mind. Now, as we conclude the liturgical season of Epiphany of God's manifestation and calling, let us remember that God calls to us in all the seasons of our life. And let us listen and respond as Lydia, Dorcas, and Phoebe did with courage and faithfulness. I invite you into a few moments of silence, listening to the Spirit speaking to you.
Please join in our Epiphany Litany. Let us respond in faith with this Epiphany Litany. Let us pray. I am the song of the morning star, adorning the darkness of night with the unrestrainable joy of the eternal. I am here, blazing across the heavens, kindling a fire that will burn deep, deep and restless in your heart. I am here to awaken, encourage, and disturb you. I am here to guide you to the Holy One who awaits you. I am the pounding heartbeats of the three who follow the song of the star, the heartbeats of trembling anticipation, the heartbeats of eager lovers searching for the beloved, the heartbeats of these who question their own sanity yet fling reason aside and follow the song of the star. I am the silence, the silence of adoration. As knees bend, as heads bow, as shy offerings are put aside, and hands hang useless and empty. I am the silence where longing embraces longing and love, is consumed, is freed, is silent, and only the song of the star remains. I am the song of the morning star. I am the silence. I am the heartbeat. I am here. Please join in the hymn of response number 747. Oh, for a closer walk with God, 747. Please be seated. We turn now to God to offer our prayers of the people. God's abundant grace is offered to us today, tomorrow, and forever. For what and for whom shall we pray? What celebrations, transitions would you like to share? You're invited to share them now aloud. Let us turn to God. In assurance of God's unconditional love poured out for us in Jesus Christ, we pray first for ourselves and for our needs. For forgiveness for wrongs we have done, 
and good deeds we have not done. For wisdom to know what needs changing in our lives and the courage to do it. For healing of our body, mind, spirit, and relationships. For a thankful awareness of all the blessings of our lives. In silence, we lift up our personal prayers. Hear our prayers, God of grace. Meet us in our need and in our honesty. In the abundance of your mercy, we pray for others. We lift up Dale and the memory of his brother. We continue to pray for Val, Maxine's brother. We give thanks for prayers and for his healing. We pray for Lorne as he heals and recovers for an infection and for those who care for him. We pray for all travelers, including Tamara and Doug. We pray for all travelers. We pray for those who grieve, the frightened and the lonely, for victims, survivors, and for those longing for justice. We pray for those who have done wrong to us and for those in prison, for the oppressed and marginalized, for migrants and the poor. In silence, we call to mind those in need of prayer and those we have promised to pray for. Hear our prayers, God of compassion. Send your spirit upon all for whom we pray. In awareness that we are one with all your human creation, we pray about the issues that confront us all, for our planet and the environment in which we live. We pray for Chile and Eastern Canada who are experiencing weather events. For the end of war, ethnic conflict, and all violence, especially in Ukraine, Sudan, and the Holy Land. We pray for liberation from racism, bigotry, and injustice. We pray for elections in El Salvador and in the United States. For freedom from addictions of all kinds, for the end of abuse of children, women, and men, for each member of the human family, that all may know the dignity and worth of being a child of God. For solutions to our common human dilemmas, and for our dedication to be part of those solutions. In silence, we lift up the needs of the world. Hear our prayers, God of justice, God of peace. May your justice and peace be manifest in our lives, and gathering our prayers into one, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In silence, we lift up our lives and name an intention for the week ahead. God, our loving Father, Mother, Parent of us all, we thank you for this time of worship and reflection on your word. We praise and thank you for the lives, faith, and service of Lydia, Dorcas, and Phoebe. We praise and thank you for the countless witness of women throughout history. Empower us by your spirit, the same spirit who empowered them with all the space special graces to work to ending despair, poverty, and injustice. 
Empower us to be bold and courageous in bringing about your reign in big and small ways. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in our hearts and all of creation, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our sending forth hymn is number 619, God of all whose love. 619. <clears throat> Please remain standing for our benediction. Friends in Christ, go forth inspired by the lives of old women of faith. Go forth inspired by their wisdom and courage to share the good news. Go forth in the name of our loving parent, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the sanctifying spirit who shines light and love through you. Amen.